What an intro that is. <laughs> How are we doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, and I'm joined by Rick Elfrink from Eindhoven Dagblad to speak about Cody Gakpo. Uh, Cody Gakpo is a player who me and Rick actually spoke about a little bit last summer when we were speaking, uh, discussing Ibrahim Sangare and the idea of that midfielder moving to United. Now, Cody Gakpo, since then, has had a fantastic season at PSV, hasn't he? He's had a real progress from last year. And then the World Cup came. And with the Netherlands, Cody Gakpo was their main man. Three goals in his first three games. A perfect hat-trick. A left foot, right foot and a header. Now, I've brought Rick on here today uh, to speak about the idea of Cody Gakpo leaving PSV in January. Because it's a possibility, isn't it, Rick? But I want to say, first of all, thank you very much for giving me some of your time today. Yeah, Sam, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, nice to be in your show again. Um, yeah, for sure, it's a possibility that uh, Cody Gakpo will leave PSV in, in January. Um, but yeah, as always, the right amount is, uh, is uh, of course, um, yeah, it's, it's important. And yeah, to, that... make, uh, to make a transfer happen, the, the right amount has to be paid. And uh, yeah, let, let's talk about that. What, what we yeah. wrote yesterday is that it's not only about the amount, but it's also about um, yeah, the conditions. Uh, the, the coming um, yeah the coming years uh, Leeds United wanted to pay uh, for Cody Gakpo in years so yeah we we can talk about that uh, for a while yes yeah, so uh, so the story that the Rick wrote yesterday uh, for uh, Arnhem Dagblad was based around 50 million being a, a deal that PSV would be willing to sell Cody Gakpo for in January but it's about the installment terms so for Manchester United fans. We know full well that we've been buying players over the last few years. And for example, if you pay 80 million for Anthony, we, we may have, I don't actually know the terms of it, but we may have paid 20, 30 million up front and the, the other 50 million over a period of four or five years. That's, that's called a player remortization. It's quite a, a standard thing to do in the modern transfer market. But Rick, what you're saying is that PSV, if they do sell Cody Gakpo in January, that they would want, the majority, how much of that 50 million would they want up front? Because you're saying they want to do that because they want to avoid inflation because 50 million now over a, a few year period, it won't be worth 50 million. So that's why they want more up front. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, what you see now, eh, well, there can be an offer of 60 million, for example, but it can be uh, an offer that is not uh, for pay, say, really acceptable because, um, uh, the buyer wants to to pay the amount in like five or six years. Uh, what we saw with Leeds United in, in last summer, uh, that was quite interesting because they wanted to, they offered 43 million euros, but the current worth of that amount was only 27 or 28 million euros. Because the current worth is, of course, uh, what you can get when you sell uh, the amount now, when you sell it uh, to... to a company who specialized in these things. Um, so what you saw uh, in the amount of, of Leeds United is that they wanted to pay it in six years and there were some real yeah, um, unrealistic bonuses in uh, in the amount uh, of Leeds United. Uh, it was 30 million fixed and it was 30, 13 million bonuses. Well, and 13 million bonuses, maybe seven or eight were not really realistic. And the 30 million, when you pay it in like six years, yeah, maybe now you get 21 or 22 million euros. Yeah? And you mentioned it already, correct? Inflation is really a, a thing at the moment. Um, yeah, inflation uh, rose the last uh, the last year uh, to incredible uh, yeah, levels, to 10, 15%. Well, you can count also when this continues and when you pay in like five or six years, um, then yeah, the, the amount of 30 million euros when you pay it in six years, yeah, it's worth much less than 30 million euros. So an offer of 60 million euros doesn't have to be 60 million euros. And PSV, uh, well, they want to sell Cody, Cody Gakpo. They are willing to sell Cody Gakpo. Of course, they, they try to keep him uh, for for the next uh, part of this uh, this football year. But when they, um, they, they, they sell him, they want to they want to have like 50 million euros and they want to have it quick that is the the, the um, yeah that is the message that i gave yesterday they want to get it quick and uh, the first uh, payment has to be a real big payment so it's like 75 or 80% has to be paid directly 
And of course, there are some bonuses that they want. Uh, maybe when the player is sold in the future, um, maybe when he, um, yeah, when he acts uh, really great in, in the shirt of Manchester United or the other club that buys him. Um, but yeah, one of the most important things is that they want 50 million and that they want it quick, so they can, um, yeah, they can they can use it to to buy a new player, uh, also to to improve their financial um, balance. Because yeah, that is also something that PSG wants. They want to to improve the balance, um, and they want to have stability for the club. It's not that they are poor or that they are bankrupt. Almost that, that's not the case, but it's really important that some uh, yeah some millions are going to be there to to yeah to have a better and st stable financial balance. Yeah, that that was that was going to be one of my questions. I asked in a little bit is if the financial situation of PSV. Are they under any pressure to sell Cody Gakpo in January? Or is it a case of they, if they wanted to, they could wait until the summer? Well, there is some pressure to buy, uh, to sell um, a player this season. So it's really important that they, they at least uh, before June, June 30, uh, 2023, that they sell at least one player for like 40, 50 million euros. Um, but it's not that they want to sell someone under the market value so yeah, what you see now, I think Cody Gakpo is his market value after the World Cup is I think like 50 million euros or so, 55 million euros. But the most important thing, yeah, what I said is that PSV wants to have the money quick, and um, yeah, it's not that they want uh, a buyer to to pay it in like five or six years, and yeah, they want also the first payment to be um, yeah to be a big payment. So that is that is one of the things that is really important. Uh, 50 million is not always 50 million, uh, <laughs> if you know what I say. If if you pay 50 million for a player and you you pay it in six years, yeah, it can be worth now 43, uh, uh, 33 million euros. That depends. Uh, depends all of the conditions of the of the payment. Does um does what is the situation with Cody Gakpo himself? Uh, do you know if he's informed the club that, of a desire to to leave in January or? Was there an agreement made after what happened in the summer? Because he's spoken about that, the disappointment of not moving to the Premier League, but he then has had a fantastic season at PSV, hasn't he? He's had his yeah, best for sure. So it's really, um, that is really yeah, something that tells a lot about the player, that he was able to, after the disappointment in August, eh, that uh, transfer to Manchester United, um, yeah, it, it did not go through because, yeah, uh, it, it all lasted too long. Eh? 16 August, they, they were still interested and they were talking to PSA, they were talking to the player. And it all seemed like it would work out and if he would go to United in, in August. Well, that didn't work out. Um, I think he's still willing to go. Uh, he's also still uh, willing to, to get his first title um, as a starter with PSA. So it's not that Cody Gakpo, he won a title also in 2018, but then he was still... Um, yeah. He was still a quite unknown player. Now he's a real, uh, yeah, he's a real starter always. Eh? So he's, he's one of the yeah, one of the most known players of PSV, of course. So he he wants to get that title for him. It's, it's important. But if there is a possibility in the winter, of course he will consider. And and yeah, what I heard is that United is looking for two players. Uh, they're looking for a, a real striker, a real number nine, is what I heard. And they are looking for a player who's who can play on different positions up front. Um, so yeah, we have to see if they really want to go for Gakpo, but there is still a possibility. Um, yeah, because also PSV, uh, they want to sell a player before June 30, and that, that is clear. Um, but yeah, it could also be a possibility that they buy him now and that they get him in, in May or in June, so that they yeah. are earlier than the rest that, of the club. That is also that was, a possibility. Maybe. That was that was the next question of mine. Is that do you do you think that's going to be something that PSV push for in the idea that Gakpo will stay at PSV until the summer? It is the perfect. Uh, that that is the perfect. Uh, yeah, that that would be perfect for PSV. Let's say it that way, um, because yeah, they they really like to keep him, of course, uh, but they also want the uh, yeah. They want to have the the insurance for for the rest of the season that they have that that they have by, uh, sold the player of course so that's that's very important for PSA what what we discussed already about about the balance uh, about the money it's important for PSA so they are not bankrupt but they they really need some kind of money um, 
yeah, I think uh, clubs are not always the buying clubs are not always open for it. So it's if United is open for it when they want a striker, eh, they want uh, someone to replace Ronaldo. Yeah, of course they want a direct uh, impulse in their in their squad. Uh, when they want some, someone to, to replace Sancho for a while because Sancho is injured, yeah, then they want someone to, to they can rely on the right, direct. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I think for buying clubs, it's not really, uh, yeah, it, it's not always uh, an advantage to, to, to buy a player already in the winter because, yeah, you want to, to have him uh, directly. The only advantage for Manchester United when they, they buy Cody Gakpo now is that they are um, yeah, excluding the other clubs for, for the coming years so that they are uh, they don't have, uh, there's no Real Madrid then, there's no Arsenal who wants to buy Cody Gakpo anymore. When, they're, um, yeah, when there is a signing, there's a signing and they are, they are sure of the player then. So yeah, we, we have to see what happens. but. Yeah, of course, uh, Gakpo is open for it, PSA is open for it, and Manchester United is open for it. Well, there are going to be talks. Uh, there are going to be talks with other clubs also. Uh, yeah. Other clubs are also in the market for him, and especially after the World Cup. Yeah, we have to see what happens. That if, is not if, really um, sure yet. If I can ask you just one final question, because I think for a lot of Manchester United fans who have watched some of Cody Gakpo this season, he very much plays on the left-hand side for PSV, doesn't he? And if you watch, um, yes. if you watch uh, how he played in the Netherlands, Louis van Gaal used him quite centrally, and then when Memphis Depay came in the team, he actually played out on the right-hand side. Uh, having, having watched more of Cody Gakpo than any of us over the last couple of years, do you think he's somebody who can play in a central position quite naturally, or is he somebody whose best position really is out on the left-hand side? No, I, I think yeah, personally, my, my opinion is that he's, he's by far on the best on the left side because, yeah, the, his quality is there. Um, yeah, the, 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 his best qualities, they, 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 yeah, you see them on that position. Uh, but, yeah, of course, he can also play as a number 10. He can also play on the right side. It's not that um, yeah, he's, a, he's a worthless player then, for sure not. Uh, also, he proved that in the national team. Uh, for sure, but in my opinion, he's the best on on the left side because yeah, his, his shots are, are really dangerous from there. Um, yeah, his crosses are really um, yeah. I think his crosses are really from top level from there. Um, yeah, when you see that at PSV, he has Luke de Jong uh, as a striker, number nine. Yeah, he's a very strong header. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a really yeah good. Uh, yeah, they're they're really good together when when the crosses of Cody Gakpo are. Um, are good and and when Luke de Jong is in the air, then yeah, then they say it's very dangerous uh, up front. Yeah, I, I think that that's an interesting point. That I think United fans are all concerned about, I suppose, because Cody Gakpo is not a typical traditional number nine. He's somebody who can play across the front three positions. But Rick, no, man, I uh, think even also he's not a he's not a traditional. No, for sure not. I think it's not his best position. Uh, for sure not. No, um, yeah, he can score goals, um, and of course he can play there. But I would say, yeah, his left, uh, he's on the left side, is really the best player uh, in the air division for sure. Cool. Uh, but <laughs> I want to say thank you very much, Rick, uh, for giving me your time today because this is, in my, in my opinion, if Manchester United are going to make a big signing in January, I think it's going to be Cody Gakpo. And as you said, as you, if you've explained there, if United do want him, we're going to have to pay quite a bit up front. That might be an issue because our financial position as a football club is bad at the moment our financial reports, the latest ones, we're losing two and a half million pounds a week as a football club. We're currently in the process of being sold. So we don't know whether we're going to have the money or not. So it's interesting to yeah, find well, out from your point of view. I, I, to be honest, um, yeah, what you see here, there was there was really uh, surprised about the amount that they paid for Anthony. And of course, Anthony is a great player. Uh, I will not um, deny that. But yeah, they paid like 100 million euros for a player in the Eredivisie. Um, I don't know exactly the, the conditions of the offer, so I, I don't know uh, when when the amount is fully paid. So yeah, uh, what what the bonuses exactly are, but um, in the head of people here is that United paid 100 million euros for Anthony. So yeah, it seems that they um, themselves that they did their best to to improve the prices of players. Um, 
maybe when they they yeah of course ajax was also in in the in the negotiations ajax was also uh for them a terrible partner i think but yeah when you pay like 100 million for a player then of course other uh, other clubs are, are not willing to sell uh their play for peanuts so that is what they have to realize yeah, and of course their financial position is, is maybe also not uh not so great but yeah yeah, I, I, I don't think United are in a particularly strong negotiating position uh, come January. And that's why it's interesting to hear from you, the idea that PSV, you, they, they, are, they do intend on selling a player before the 30th of June to fund what's coming next for Ruben Nistelrooy. Big up Ruben Nistelrooy, by the way. Um, yeah, well, I think, uh, and you mentioned that before, that inflation is really something uh, that we, we, we must not underestimate uh, this thing because it's in the financial world also. It's a real big thing. Um, yeah, when you have like 10, 15 percent inflation like now, and when it continues for for a few years, and you pay amounts in like five, six years, then uh, an offer is maybe only worth half. So yeah, clubs will realize that. Of course, they have also financial uh, experts in their uh, in their boards. Uh, they have financial experts uh, among their ad advisors. So, yeah, that is what we, we must not underestimate uh, this thing. Cool. Well, hopefully, Rick, me and you can have a conversation maybe at some point in January after United put a bid in and maybe there's something a little bit more concrete to speak about. But thank you very much for offering your time today. Not so thank you, thank you very much. See you to soon. Give us some, some real clarity. And I hope you have a fantastic Christmas, you and your family. You also, man. Thanks. Ciao.